Hello, hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the global launch of the book, My Voice, a collective memoir by women of substance brought to you by the one and only Global Influencers Publishing House. Our voices are one of the most valuable possessions that we have. It is an essential tool for communicating with the world around us. Our voice can be both vocal or written. Both can be quiet and both can be a roar. Women's voices are crucial to creating an inclusive, open and prosperous societies. To have a voice is to be empowered. And today amongst us, we have 23 brave and courageous women who chose to stand up, speak up and get heard. Taking charge of their situations and circumstances, turning challenges into inspiration. These women raised their voices to share their inspiring and heartwarming stories with the world. They are the unsung heroes and community champions who have gone above and beyond their course of work, service and passions, providing extraordinary examples of courage, resilience, triumph, kindness, compassion, self-love, transformation and success. Examples set by them will serve as an inspiration, encouragement and proof that nothing is impossible. And these are the co-authors of the book, My Voice. So before I continue, let's all give them a loud roar of applause. My Voice was an initiative started by KitKat Events and Marketing a year ago when the entire world was grappling with the COVID pandemic. It was a means to create a spa safe space for like-minded women to come together, engage in, and discuss pressing issues related to women, to share responsibility, make a difference, and ultimately provide much needed support to one another through a series of online events and networking groups. Today, I'm proud and humbled to say this simple initiative has grown to a network of over a thousand women from 20 different countries and soon to be a bestseller book. With that, it's time now to meet the co-authors of the book, My Voice, a collective memoir by women of substance. Let's hear about their journey and inspiration to share it with the world. Let's start with Anya Wodkowska. Originally from Poland, Anya now lives in Singapore with her family. After spending years within the corporate administration, she finally found her true passion in teaching the philosophy of healthy living through healthy eating. Over to you, Anya. Hello, uh, good afternoon, good evening. What a privilege to be first. Um, on a, on a daily basis, I teach people how to eat healthy and I can help them with a lot of health issues. But when I heard first time about my voice project, I was excited because I actually realized that there is something else what I can potentially teach other women. And this is basically to just do it, to, to paraphrase the, the famous uh, Nike slogan. Uh, I hope that the journey which I shared in, in my chapter will inspire some women to make a changes, to never ever wait for the perfect moment, just uh, take the action and do it. So I hope that um, you will encourage all the especially young ladies to, uh, to read my chapter and all the co-authors here to, to make a change. Great, well, thank you very much, Anya. And I'm sure everybody's looking forward to reading your story. Thank you. The next one we have is Anna von Zinner. Anna lives in Australia. She's an author, thought leader, international speaker, and unafraid. Having a stroke at 50, she found a new purpose and direction in life where she could live it to the fullest. Anna. Thank you. 
my focus is something different. I've taken the statement, I think, therefore I am, to a different extreme. My focus on that statement is, I write, therefore I am forever. So now in the time of COVID, we're all thinking, what can we do to become immortal? What can we do to leave our mark on the world? Write, 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 write. Write a book, write a chapter in a book, just write something and you will be there forever. Particularly if you put something on the internet. Remember, anything on the internet will be there forever. So my, I am an editor, I am an author, and I am a writing coach and mentor. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Anna. And yes, your story is very powerful and it's a great thing about leaving a legacy. Next we have is Aradhna Dea. Aradhna is the founder and CEO of Access Alts Asia, a Hong Kong based global investment club. Being in the male dominated industry, She's even more passionate about women's empowerment and building a diverse, inclusive society. Over to you, Aradhana. Hi, everyone. As I was just told by my very empowered 18-year-old, unmute. So, um, <laughs> uh, what an absolute privilege being amongst all of you. And it, uh, Nira, thank you for this wonderful initiative bring together, you know, interesting women who've had great journeys and, uh, you know, putting all of our voice on a common forum so, so that we can hopefully inspire and learn from so many more. So congratulations on this great initiative. Hopefully you all get to become great friends. But, um, you know, uh, for me, interestingly, this was a very personal journey. When I started writing it out, I thought, you know, this is, you know, I'm going to tell my story, you know, hopefully people get to read it and realize what I've, you know, all my trials and tribulations. But I actually realized it was deeply personal. And I started self-reflecting and found that, you know, as women, we climb so many mountains. We're climbing mountains every day at home, at work. We are some, sometimes being judged. We have to constantly prove ourselves a little bit more. And I think that when you become successful, like I think all, actually I think all women are, you know, whether they're raising kids or they're going to office, when you become successful, people, you know, look at you and say, wow, you're amazing, you know, uh, you're doing so well, you know, uh, you're lucky or whatever. But I always feel that nobody likes the kind of effort, the sweat, the tears, the trials that go into that. So for me, this was a very personal journey, reliving many of those moments. And, um, you know, I've tried capturing some of those here. And I hope it tells everybody that if, you know, someone like me, you know, who came from a small town and really, you know, had many, many mountains to climb before I could get here, anybody can. So I hope that becomes my voice and everybody else's voice. Thank you very much, Aradna. And I remember the thing from your chapter, the girl with the little voice um, is now a big girl with a big voice. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Helen. Um, I believe she was unable to join. So we will hear a little bit uh, from her a little later. Um, right. Ivy um, is joining a little late as well. So now we've got Minal, Minal Mehtani. Minal is the CEO and founder of OCD and Anxiety Support Hong Kong, a registered mental health charity. Having suffered for years with OCD, depression, and anxiety, she has now dedicated her life to supporting, educating, and coaching adults and teenagers suffering from these challenges. Over to you, Minal. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much, Neera and Shika, for giving us the opportunity to tell our story and to all the amazing women out there who are sharing their story as well. Um, I'm very honored to tell my story. I faced an anxiety disorder in my late 20s, which was crippling, lonely, scary and turbulent. And quite frankly, I didn't think I'd get through it but I did with the support of my best friend and my sister, I was able to seek treatment and come out the other side and to see the world again, um, being fearless and ready to face the challenges ahead of me. 
Um, I think it's really important to talk about mental health and mental illness because there's so much taboo in Asia and across the globe. One in four people suffer from a mental health disorder, but only 26% of them seek treatment because they're scared of being discriminated against by friends, family, their workplace, and the community. So I'm really hoping that by telling my story, I will um, help to change the narrative and make it more socially acceptable to share that if you have a mental health problem, you're no different from somebody who has a physical illness like cancer or diabetes, and you deserve the same respect and care and attention and love as somebody, as somebody else who's suffering from physical health. And for somebody who um, reads the chapter, what I really want you to take from this, if you're suffering from a mental illness, is never to give up, to hold on. There's always somebody who wants to listen and will listen to you. Um, I know it's scary, but time will pass. And through dedication and perseverance, it is possible to recover and get through to the other side. And being on the other side now, I'm able to counsel and support others who are suffering. And by doing so, I can do this with my own personal experience and my knowledge of being a counselor. Um, and it really does make a difference. So thank you for the opportunity to share my story. Thank you very much, Manal. And um, it is courageous for you to not only, you know, cure yourself and, uh, you know, be okay, but also now to help other people and come out and tell people that, you know, this is what happened to me. So kudos to you for that. And yes, it will be very inspiring for a lot of people to read your journey and what you've done with that. Thank you so much, Neera. Thank you. Next up, we have Neelam Harjani. Neelam is the founder of Inspire Yoga in Hong Kong. Her vision is of providing an antidote for fast-paced city life, having lived and enjoyed and suffered that once upon a time in her life. Over to you, Neelam. Thank you so much, Neera. Thank you so much, Shika, for you know, creating this platform for all of us, for making, um, giving us this chance to share our stories, the, uh, you know, amongst such beautiful, inspiring women right here. So I'm feeling really grateful to be part of um, this panel. And basically, I really wanted the takeaway of my chapter to to maybe even leave you with more questions than answers, you know, where you start to introspect a little to ask yourself, you know, what, what does success mean to me? You know, very, uh, very, in a, in a very almost masculine dominated uh, definition of success, I was driven. Um, and I was in investment banking, and I felt like I was at the pinnacle, you know, and, but yet I looked, I felt in my heart, I didn't like the person I was becoming, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to have to harbor aggression in order to move forwards or, um, or not have a space for compassion in my work. And in, in doing that, you know, I saw my own healing journey where I really took the path of yoga as a way of connecting my body and my mind, my head, my heart, and my hands, so that I really could feel where my passion was with work. And so just in that journey of healing, I, I saw, you know, go, going from a place where um, there was so much irritability, there was so much tension, there was so much stress in this high, high performing, high paced environment, to moving into a choice, you know, having that clarity of what is it? How do I define success? You know, and so for me, it's if I can sit and have a smile on my face, I think we're all doing amazing, right? And so, um, and so it's that journey that, you know, I went from, you know, deep into the corporate world 
um, going through a, a healing and then moving actually back, ironically, back on the trading floors a lot of the time, back into the corporate world, but this time with a message, you know, a message of empowerment, a message of choice, a message of, you know, sculpting an environment where we can really thrive rather than just survive. Great, thank you very much for that message, Neelam. And uh, I, I, I mean, it was interesting for me to read your story as well, where you know you went from this highly paid corporate person to then not making any money at yoga and just having one person turn up at a time and to, of course, where you are today. So it's a great story. It's a journey, right? And um, so just accepting it, still keeping a smile on your face, still feeling that sense of joy in doing what you're doing. I feel like that attracts success no matter what, where, what industry you're in. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much, Neelam, for that. Well, up next, we have Dr. Noshin Takwi. Noshin is a renowned Pakistani nutritionist and motivational speaker. Her inspirational journey has given hope to many women in Pakistan who are struggling to get their existence acknowledged in a traditionally male-dominated society. Well, thank you, Noshin, for sharing your story. And let's hear a little bit more from you. Hello, thank you so much, Neera and Nishika, for having me on this platform. Such a great feeling I have right now. You can't even imagine. If I look back, and if I look back you know, like in the last six years and today sitting here, it feels like a great achievement. And uh, my, when my chapter is all about women's strength and the perception that nothing is more important than your physical and mental well-being, no matter what happens in your life, you should not compromise on something which is not acceptable for you. And definitely today where I'm standing and when I started my journey, because when you asked me to write this uh, journey, I was like, oh my God, I have to go through all the events in my life, which I've just, you know, buried them and I don't want to see them. But it was a great, it was a great revisiting them. It made me realize like where I was and where I am and what I had and what I have now. And uh, uh, my my chapter will be a great re hope for the women who think that uh, life is finished when uh, something bad happens to you or some if you're God forbid, if your home is broken or something like that. So, and if you are professional, uh, don't ever think that you can't, you know, you can start your professional journey from any point at any age of time. And this is what is my whole story about. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, definitely your chapter is going to be an inspiration for a lot of women who are also going through the kind of struggles that you are. Well, up next, we have Pari Pascal Sailor. She's born and raised in Hong Kong. Pari blends the passion of West with the loving wisdom of East. She is the co-founder of Awakening Light School, a modern day Harry Potter school for adult souls to awaken and rise into their greatest expanded selves. Over to you, Pari. Thanks very much, Neera. Um, I'm similar to Aradna um, and echoing a personal journey that I went through. And um, it was through the unexpected and tragic loss of my husband um, that I rebirthed myself anew through a process of what I call becoming my own heroine. So I went through the process of survivor to winner up against indomitable um, adversity, attacks, you name it, um, to birth what I call becoming an unbreakable diamond, an unshakable diamond, the kind of woman that is in the space to be guided by her heart-centered wisdom, her soul-rooted guidance, and to live what I term an unbullshified life, one that is real, and one that lives from her higher guidance and it birthed my goddess and warrior inner power. And so through a process of realizing through my pain that I could birth alchemy and turning our pain into higher wisdom, higher love, higher truth. 
I birthed a process that I'm here to share with people around how to do that in their life, whether it's, you know, through grief, through trauma, through transition of any kind, that we can rise higher. And in the words of Maya Angelou, rise in hope. Um, and um, I am so divinely privileged and honored to be with all of you. Um, I think it is absolutely beautiful when women come together and our collective and individual voices rise like this. Um, and my hope is that it inspires other people to share their voice as well. So very, Great. very thanks. Thank you so much, Fari, for that. And um, again, I mean, you know, things that happen obviously were not something that you had ever dreamt of, but uh, you've come out as a winner. And again, a lot of inspiration to be driven from that. So thank you so much for sharing that story with us. Next, we have Princess Noakego Ibrahim Pam. Princess Noakego belongs to the royal family of Nigeria. She's currently residing in South Korea, and she's a seasoned expatriate spouse, an educationist, inspirational speaker, transformational leader, social entrepreneur, and philanthropist, working towards the betterment of expat women from around the world. Over to you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Shika and Nira, for inviting me and for giving me a voice to speak on behalf of the expatriate uh, spouses and professional. When you read my story, you get to understand the struggle of the expatriate spouse. They are underestimated life, the struggles that we go through, the broken homes uh, through moving from one country to the other, the displaced children, tech culture children who have difficulties, and especially the wives that are left behind, wives who leave their career behind and they become financially independent on their spouses and having to rebrand themselves becomes difficult. So my chapter is about telling my story as an expatriate wife, how I've been able to rebrand myself in different ways in different countries, learning different cultures, different languages to be able to adapt and to keep abreast with my husband's career. So. I'm using my chapter to encourage all the expatriate spouses out there or professional that don't give up. Always find something in your new country that will be productive to you. It's not all about just making money, but you can keep your mental health healthy and active by uh, joining the network. The expat professional and business women's network is in 25 countries across continent. You can be part of that. We, we, we engage in capacity building for women, vulnerable women. When I mean vulnerable, vulnerable mm -hmm. women, not in the sense of uh, health, but in terms of not being financially uh, uh, dependent, uh, independent, not having a career or not having the, the pleasure of doing what you want to do because you're in a different country. So when you go through my chapter, I hope that it will speak to your need. I hope it will speak to your struggle. And I hope it will encourage you to know that you can always rebrand yourself. Don't get stuck in your in in, in your comfort zone. Take take a risk. Mm -hmm. Like just uh, writing this book is also a risk. As uh, talking about my vulnerability and my difficulties. So I want to say thank you and congratulations to the other co-authors for us coming together to write this wonderful book. And thank you to Shika and Mira for this wonderful initiative. Congratulations, everyone, and God bless everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those inspiring words. And again, a lot of us uh, co-authors are also expatriate wives. And, um, you know, the fact that we are doing something and we're happy and we're enjoying our lives and helping others, uh, you know, goes to say that uh, exactly to your point that there are things that can be done and we just have to take charge of our own lives. So thank you for that message. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Roshni Pandey. Roshni is a serial entrepreneur from Singapore. She is the co-founder of Blue Box and founder and managing partner of Lexicon. But she is also very passionate about social causes, launching several initiatives, enabling children and women from un underserved communities in Asia Pacific. Over to you, Roshni. Hi everyone. Um, firstly, I'm so excited. Um, I was dragging my feet. I had meetings. We all get busy, right? And uh, just seeing everybody today, I, I have uh, no more tiredness in me. 
uh, and it's, it's just such an amazing uh, feeling to see everybody and and to see these women smiling. A lot of my meetings are with men, <laughs> so this is such a change of of pace and uh, beauty. Let's put it there. Um, I think my uh, book was uh, my chapter was all about a journey. Uh, it talks about my journey from leaving the multinational and starting something of my own, and uh, and 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 the struggles there. Uh, but I think uh, the Writing forced me to actually reflect uh, a lot and realize that, uh, you know, it's, it's always been some sort of journey. We just define it differently and we always uh, recognize it as a journey only when we're making a shift. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's uh, you know, that's when we reflect. Otherwise, uh, you know, we're, we're, like someone said, we're totally in our comfort zone. So to me, uh, my, my chapter is all about um, journey and it's all about courage and bravery to take that step um you know i i'm in consulting uh, i give other people advice but it's so funny how much of my own advice i don't take uh and uh, it's it's incredible how much of your own voice you don't uh, listen to or even hear sometimes so i think uh, you know and and for me at least i know it's probably true for a lot of people um I always make the excuse of busyness, the business of being busy, right? So uh, I do a lot of things, so there is some merit to it, but I think it's it's also one of my excuses. Uh, so I think when I stepped into this entrepreneurial world and I could do so much, I got busy again. And uh, thanks to Shika and Nira for uh, kind of talking me off the ledge of going back into that old habit and pattern again. Uh, I said, no, I, I, can't, I don't have time to write this uh, chapter. Uh, what would I write about? There's so many things. And they talked me into it and thankfully uh, so. Uh, and when this uh, opportunity came up, it forced me to reflect again. I had stopped reflecting. I had started, but then I had stopped because it's easy to slip into that old habit again. Uh, so it was a big reminder to stay on the journey that I was on. Uh, and if you talk about what's inspired me, I don't think one thing's ever inspired me. I think I've had inspiring people along uh, the way. My grandma was probably the first one, my mom, my sister, um, and uh, you know now my daughter uh, who continues to keep me creatively inspired, et cetera. Um, so I think the one thing that I would leave everybody with and I hope that everybody takes from the chapter as well is I am due to the women before me and they shared their voice in some way whether it be through scolding or telling or, or anyway but they, they uh, shared their voice with me in some way and I think if we share our voices uh, then we so can we be to other women after us so I think that's um, one of the biggest things that I kind of came upon when I was thinking about what to say um, today. The other thing I wanted to leave everybody with, uh, and hopefully uh, the readers as well, is somebody asked me this question uh, just yesterday, which was, what would you do if you just couldn't fail? And I thought that was an amazing question. So I will leave that question with you to start that journey. That is a great question, Roshi. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh... You know, it just opens up your world if you do that. It, it just sure does. It world. sure does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Roshni, for sharing your journey and your inspiration to write the book. Up next, we have Sheetal Ganeriwal. She's originally from India and she's based in Hong Kong. Sheetal is a successful brand marketing professional who believes our mind is a castle of fantasies and our life experiences are excerpts of our daily conversations with our mind. Over to you, Sheetal. Wow, uh, thank you so much, Neera and Shikha for bringing these wonderful ladies on this platform. So today I'm going to sleep so very well. One thing I know that I've met such amazing ladies whom I've always seen through some or the other platform, but got to hear and share a common space. So firstly, congratulations to each one of you for bringing such inspiring story. I'm already having goosebumps while saying that, but inspiring stories that not only is just a story, but it is an experience. And when we are talking about experience, I believe that 
you know, our life is the tapestry of different people, different uh, places we've been and how we met them and what our experience is all about. And we as a woman take it so hard on ourselves that we have to do this. We have to prove ourselves in that mad rush. We most of the times forget living that moment. And our mind is always struggling and struggling. So at that point in my life, I realized that I need to take this pause and take a moment for myself is to train my mind to think in a way that I want it to think and not think, not being dominated by my mind. So that's how I wrote my chapter. Uh, it has a lot of snippets about my life, but how my mind played a bigger role and how I became what I am and what this journey is right now. I'm just, I'm just so excited to share with everyone out there. And I'm sure the entire combination, the whole mixture of this recipe coming from everyone in this platform is going to leave reader with full of inspiration. There'll be moments of tears, there'll be moments of joys, and there cannot be a better event or moment for a reader like having to read story about some women who are trying to do their best in their point of life and trying to learn from their point of life. So that is a great question, Roshni, you left everybody thinking that what can you do when you can't fail? And that is how our life as a woman is. We really cannot fail. And even if we fail, we have to leave that back and move further. So I'm just so looking forward for this book. And thank you for putting all the blood and sweat in making this event possible, the book possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sheetal, for sharing that. And definitely your chapter was very interesting. And um, the beauty about it is all the food for thought that is in there for people to ponder about. Uh, it'll be an interesting read for sure. Okay, up next, um, we have someone very, very special, and that is Shikha Sarkar. <laughs> Shikha is, as many of you know, my partner at KitKat Events and Marketing, who are organizing this event today, and Global Influencers Publishing House, which is bringing out this book, one of many, many to come. But more than that, she is my partner in crime. And of course, um, uh, you know, uh, another day we will tell you a lot more about it. But today we're going to keep it very professional. <laughs> Shikha is steely, determined and a passionate person. But what makes her even more unique is her spirit and her being adventurer by nature, not only in terms of her travel, but how she lives her life, taking risks and challenges and going into the unknown territory with ease and confidence. Over to you, Shikha. Thank you, Neera, for this wonderful introduction uh, regarding partnering crime. We'll definitely discuss it some other day. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, celebrating this milestone moment in our lives. You know, it's, it's, it's an absolutely... Uh, it's, it's exhilarating for all of us. Um, it has been a great journey for me to relive my last two decades of my life through the book, My Voice. Uh, it has given me a voice to share my journey to the outside world and an effort to impact at least a one person out there, you know, who can get inspired or empowered and to see yourself in a light. And that's what My Voice is all about. My story is all about my life expedition, uh, why I chose the startup life after a long stint in the corporate world. There hasn't been an easy path for me as well. There were failures, uh, you know, there were absolutely days when I had, you know, I felt, what am I doing in my life? Uh, having major setbacks during the course, it has been draining to actually pick up the pieces and to restart from the scratch. It needs some good amount of luck, resilience, and belief that uh, things will turn around, and it did. This book is also a medium for me to leave a legacy for my daughter, 
who would be proud of her mom someday saying that mm-hmm. that she was a strong independent emotionally and financially i will always be grateful for my mother for making me one so thank you so much it has been wonderful actually going through this entire journey of mine and putting it uh, you know in in a form of book and i hope all of you enjoy uh, we would be sharing the link of uh, uh, the book um which is in the right now available in the kindle form and uh, i would be sharing in the chat session a little later so what do you need all thank you very much for that message shikha uh, our next uh, co author is sonal darbari nigam she is based in hong kong sonal is a perfectionist business woman and philanthropist her biggest passion is striving to make a difference in the lives of others who are forgotten by our busy world over to you sonal thanks for the lovely introduction neera and uh, wow uh, it's really so nice to hear from all of you about all your journeys and so so uh, empowering i literally had goosebumps <laughs> so and i feel so honored to be a part of uh, this book uh, thanks to shikha who persisted me uh, to go for it and um, yeah once i started to pen down it really uh, took me back in how i started and i would like to dedicate this to my daughter who is going to an international school just like an expat life right and um, who asked me a question one day that you know all the money which we give for the charity where does it go what does it happen how does it happen and i realized that although i was contributing monetarily to the charities but my kids were not seeing actually how it was happening so it really uh, made me realize and think that maybe you know i should make more effort in taking uh, the causes personally and taking my daughters and showing them around and um, that's how i started uh, doing philanthropy in a very unknown city hong kong uh, in last 6 years when i moved from new york so yes and um, there are so many wonderful causes and i would also say that along with my journey i came across such wonderful people was so driven passionate about their work i learned so much from them so it was, i would say it was a collective effort you know people who trusted me came along become a part of my journey so i'm very thankful that it happened and yeah i'm looking forward to read the chapters and i hope you know my journey can also inspire somebody thank you very much for sharing that and it's and it's a great message that we can leave for our children because uh, yet again you know they they're living a very privileged life and they need to know you know that there are others who are not so thank you very much for sharing that so up next we have susan mary she is born and educated in ireland and susan found her desire to support children's well-being and safety during her long international career as an educator having moved back to uk she founded the fair child safeguarding consultancy service to fulfill her moral duty to protect all children susan thank you so much and good morning from ireland uh it's not really without significance that today i speak to you from my hometown from rush in a small village here in north county dublin it is where my story began where i feel my true self and where i'm sure i will end my days i never really saw my life as anything to celebrate or to share as a story with others and i thank both ladies for encouraging me to get involved in the project Uh, I think that many women suffer from imposter syndrome feelings when asked to stand up and to have a, a voice. I'm an educator and have been involved in education for a significant amount of time. But I always when asked what I taught, I always said children 
rather than a subject. I found my greatest strength to be in working with children who were vulnerable or disengaged or who struggled to meet the needs of the schools they were in. But actually, whilst being an educator, my fundamental belief is that we as individuals have a duty, a moral duty to protect our children. And that moral duty is a global responsibility and not just for the children that we have ourselves. I have learned, I have reinvented myself and learned in my journey six times now, living in different countries and involving myself in different things. And what I have learned from that journey is that our life shapes us, but that we can choose how we act or react to the changes and challenges that we are faced with. So I'm hoping that my chapter encourages others to feel the fear and do it anyway, as the expression says, to embrace change and adversity and to see it as a time to grow. But more importantly, to work within your communities that you are in, for the readers to work within the communities to learn to recognise to call out and to challenge the abuse of children, to learn how to keep children safe, and to ensure that we empower children so that they can become our best self. I have been fortunate to be very, very supported by my children, my daughters, my some strong members of my family who are very close, and some lifelong friends who have seen me along my journey. So. To leave some words with you, to ask both the listeners and the readers to examine their values and beliefs, to declutter life, to create the space, to fill that life with meaning, with people and with opportunities and experiences which fulfill them. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity and it's a privilege to be part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for sharing that and of course, keeping the children safe who are the most vulnerable. So thank you very much and also bringing this out and of course your story in the book. Up next, we have Tato Belang. Tato is a South African inspirational keynote and TEDx speaker. She is a leadership and authenticity coach. Her passion has led her to become a member of the female wave of change a global movement that unites women, changing the world into a better place. Welcome, Tato. Thank you so much, Nira and Shika. Well, I'm so energized and inspired by all these amazing, beautiful stories. And I'm really honored to be here today. Um, I'm meeting and hearing everybody else. Um, my story that I shared was really a journey to authenticity. Um, I'm passionate about people embracing their authentic self. I, I grew up, you know, I share about my own personal story where I grew up um, having to suppress my own voice and my authentic self, you know, um, the differences that I had, um, I've had to suppress because I did what I thought was um, appropriate on, you know, by society. I did what I deemed was acceptable by society. And I'm passionate about helping people, especially women, in really tapping into um, and tapping into the inner power, you know, and, and what makes me me really about my the, the authenticity and the uniqueness that each of us bring into the world and into the people that we engage in um, and engage with. So um, I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really inspired by everybody who's here. And I hope that people can learn from my journey and, and my story that really it's never too late to, to rewrite and change the narrative about the story. If it's not serving you, if it's not serving the purpose for which you were born, because I believe that each of us have got incredible value to add and to make an impact and be an inspiration to others. Um, and, and I really hope that through this, we can form a great network bigger than this that Shika and Nira has already done uh, with all our beautiful stories to make an impact in the world. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, Sato, for sharing that. And you're so right about creating an impact. And if we all did a little bit every day, uh, every moment that we can, then surely we can change the world and make it a better place. So thank you very much for sharing that. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Well, up next, we have Tracy Ho. Tracy is the founder and director of Frame and Fame, a personal branding consulting and executive coaching firm in Hong Kong. Having struggled with issues as a young girl, she now enables women to be seen, heard, and raise their voices to rise to the next level. Tracy, tell us a little bit more about your journey and your inspiration to write the book. Thank you. Thank you, Nira and Ashika and everybody for uh, being with us here. It's a big honor to be uh, joining the launch to share with my story, right? I mean, I heard so many very inspiring, motivating stories from many of you and all of you just now. And to be, to be honest, I, I feel like my story is just a little, you know, uh, small, but, but that's, it's also my, I would say instinct that now I realized, um, I, 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 I used to be a person who underestimate myself a lot, and that uh, it's a result of I would say you know some sort of parenting and intimidating people I met in my you know previous thirty plus years. And just to share with you a story, I many of you just now you said oh there could be an intimidating male dominating world. Um, in fact, speaking of intimidation to me it can happen in both male and female. And one of the most intimidating boss I had was actually a female. And uh, to a point that he, she, I was working a startup with her in a, like a training and consulting company. And uh, we started with a, you know, pretty okay relationship, but then it went down right away. And later I realized, you know, another female created some gossip behind my back and then created the insecurity within this ex boss of mine. And she start, you know, yelling, shouting, never appreciating my work. And even, you know, got jealousy. But she got jealous when clients wrote a good email to my boss, come, you know, giving me compliments. So that had been very big toxic experience to me. I, I wasn't aware of that, but I was very, very you know, frustrated at that time. And then I realized, why, why, why would I got, you know, it's shouted at just me, right? So being pecked on, being intimidated, being yelled at for no reasons, or even, you know, when clients send compliments and my boss got jealous, made me really frustrated at that time. And then I moved on to another company, which inspired me to start my own business. It's a financial comms firm at that time. And I remember my boss, actually, he is a, you know, he's a male. So then, but he reminded me one point, it's Tracy, never work with anybody who is insecure, both clients or company or bosses. And that has become one of the best advice I was given. And um, that it's, a big thing to me and uh, but sooner or later I face I need to face my insecurity in my work in many you know phases of my life and and I reminded myself I can't work with anybody insecure and I also cannot make myself as an insecure person so then I try to you know uh, I do a lot of self-reflection reading um learning from people it's my biggest motivation so i'm very happy to to be with you all here because i can learn from all of you uh by you know people's stories experiences i realize it has been my biggest motivation and that also motivate me to you know join you guys to co-author this book and thank you very much again for the opportunity uh i hope my story can can you know, inspire some people, specifically like my daughters. I'm sending, you know, the story to them that um, we need to face our, you know, true self and then build in, build a security when we grow. No matter who you are, we need to accept ourselves. And instead of keep saying sorry or being apologetic, we need to find a place that we can grow and shine as we are. So that is the, you know, my, my two cents and share in the story as well. Great, thank you very much for that sharing, Tracy. We look forward to reading the story. 
Up next, we have Ivy Aki. Ivy is a young African social entrepreneur from Kenya, and she is passionate about transforming the lives of young women to become leaders in the entrepreneurial space. Over to you, Ivy. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Are you able to hear me? Hello, good. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to participate in writing the book. For me, it was really a pleasure to be able to share my story and uh, my life journey as a student, traveling in different parts of the world, at the same time, uh, learning about culture and uh, tapping into the opportunities around there and also being the first African in my school, the challenges that I've faced and overcome, which have only strengthened me and not weakened me. So all these, the challenges that I've faced in terms of ageism, discrimination, um, tapping into the entrepreneurial field, being able to make decisions at a really young age in a company, I think strengthens me. And uh, I dedicate this book to my mom because she has made me who I, who, who I am and who I want to become. So this book, I dedicated totally to my mom and my best friend. And uh, in everything, I've learned to change what I can and to accept what I cannot. And in this next part of my journey, I definitely choose to soldier on, tapping into the opportunities that are there. And I'd like to tell the young people out there when they read my book, they should know, they should know that they, there are no limits in anything they do. Let's keep trying. Failure is part of learning. Let's keep trying. And uh, just like an eagle, it has no boundaries. So let's keep trying, fall down, stand up again, and keep moving. So that it will encourage more young people out there. Opportunities are there. Let's just tap into them. So thank you. So much. I'm connecting from Kenya. I landed in Kenya. So, yes, Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you so much for the opportunity once again. And I. Thank you very much, Ivy. I know it's very hard to keep track of you. Um, you know, from South Korea to Spain and now in Kenya. You know, back at home. So thank you for sharing that. And I just wanted to let everybody know that she's actually the youngest author in this book so and you know she's um, you know lived a life where she's still able to write something at such a young age so that's commendable um now we do have some of the authors that are not present today and but we do want to introduce and and we do want to share you know their thoughts and um probably share some videos of them as well with you well firstly i wanted to um talk about um, our next co-author who is mrs purvish Shroff popularly known as Auntie Purvis, she lives her life with the motto, to live is to give. Service to humanity is service to God. And true to those words, along with her husband, the late Mr. Rusi Shroff, she has supported many charitable organizations and is well known for her contributions to children and their welfare. She couldn't be with us here today, but she sends her good wishes and blessings to everybody. Next is Lorna Dunning. Lorna is a success coach living in UK. A few years ago, Lorna bid farewell to her executive leadership career to devote herself fully to her passion for helping others achieve limitless success and fulfillment in all parts of their lives. Let's watch Lorna's video. Hi, Lorna Dunning here. Really excited to let you know that the book that I'm co-authoring, My Voice, a collection of memoirs by women of substance, is going to be released soon. Let me tell you why I decided to write for this book. Beyond the who, me, you want me to contribute to this book? Seriously? Beyond that? Two reasons. It's for a children's charity, so no brainer. But secondly, I've always wanted to be an author for 25 years I've wanted to write, but it was always a dream, just a something I would do someday. 
And then given I am a success coach to hundreds of people, and this is something I coach and guide them to do, I figured I'd better make a decision. If I wasn't gonna set the goal of writing a book anytime soon, then me writing a book was not gonna happen anytime soon. The minute I set the goal, I was approached and invited to contribute to this book. Just like always happens, the minute we make a committed decision, things just start happening. And my story, my contribution to this book among, alongside these amazing women, I talked to you about my career. I was in global organizations for many years, senior executive roles, but it started slowly and I had failures, I had rejections, I didn't think it was gonna happen. And then when it did, it happened beyond my wildest dreams to the point where I suffered from lack of confidence, imposter syndrome, but I share all of that with you and hopefully there's some tools in there that you can use that if you're going through a similar thing or you intend to, then you can put these things into place in your own life. And I wrap it up by telling you about my transition to what I call my next purpose, which is to be a coach and a leader and a support mentor to people who are trying to improve the quality of their life. So I hope you enjoy it. Please buy the book if you're interested and let us know what you think and I hope you love it. And that was Lorna. Up next, we have Nita Sanjay. Nita is an international life and career coach who's passionate about empowering women to achieve their goals. Her mantra is be brave and travel your own road. And if there's none, then pay one for yourself. Nita is currently enjoying a no digital staycation with her husband. And that's why she couldn't be with us here today. Let's hear from Nita. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all superheroes. Just like you all, I also grew up dreaming about superheroes. Someone who would swoop down and save me from all my worries. Little did I know how my dreams would shatter and how my life would turn out to be. I'm Neeta Sanjay, a life and career coach with a mission to empower a million women by 2030 to become more confident, positive and resilient and to live and lead a life they desire. And how do I do that? by coaching, mentoring, speaking, and in this case, by co-authoring the book titled My Voice. I'm honored to be a part of this initiative, along with 20 phenomenal women across the world, to share our experiences and learnings with the main objective of inspiring you all. I firmly believe that women can be whatever they want to be if they set their mind to it. But of course, the road to progress is filled with challenges, biases, and discrimination. My story is about how one phone call changed the entire course of my life and connected me with my purpose. It's a story of resilience on how I was able to change my mindset from a victim to a survivor and later to a thriver. Adversities in life are inevitable. Even though it was very painful to revisit those heartbreaking moments, I decided to come forward and share the message that no matter what challenges you face in life or how hard you fall, you do have the strength in you to rise up and move on. I'm sure this book will provoke discussion and encourage and inspire you to look at your own life's challenges and your stories of strength as well. And many thanks to the wonderful pe people behind this, Neera Gupta and Shika Sarkar, for bringing us all together on this platform. And if you're curious to know who my superhero was, Make sure you get your copy of the book. Thank you. And that was Nita. Up next is Shirley Adrain. Shirley is a diversity and inclusion consultant, leadership coach and corporate trainer, Scottish by her heritage and now living in Hong Kong. Overcoming the initial shock of her real limitations, aging, disease and death. Shirley drew on her professional learnings to help her move past her imagined limitations, time and resource. And today, she lives from her deeper, authentic, more self. This is Shirley. Hi, 
I'm Shirley Adrain. I'm a wife, mother, daughter, and now author. I also run a diversity and inclusion consultancy where I provide leadership guidance to clients such as EY and uh, BNP Paribas. I was honoured to be invited to co-author this book where I share my story of how using positivity and purpose has helped me overcome life's challenges. In August 2020, I realised for the first time in my life that I am dying. I had just been diagnosed with advanced stage 4 terminal lung cancer, which already spread to my liver, my bones, neck and other places. I was absolutely devastated, especially as I've never smoked and I've always been really healthy. At first, I just didn't know what to do. But then I realised that I've got a choice with regard to how I react to my diagnosis. So I put in place a holistic strategy, adjusting my health and wellness habits, mastering my mind and much, much more. In April 2021, my doctors were amazed to find that I'm now in complete remission from my cancer. As far as I see it, facing death has been the greatest gift of life for me because I've learned many lessons. Um, I've made changes in all aspects of my life and my business has gone to the next level. I have found and I follow my purpose and part of that is to help others overcoming life's challenges. I hope that my story will inspire and help you. And if it does, please feel free to contact me to see if I can help in any way. Thank you. And that was Shirley. Uh, she recorded this message uh, specifically for today. Up next, we have Sonia Samtani. Sonia is the founder and CEO of All About You, a leading mental wellness center in Hong Kong. Her vision is to empower individuals with simple yet powerful tools to navigate through the ups and downs of life with acceptance so they too can tune into the magnificence of who they are. We are all on a healing journey that doesn't end. And every footstep that we take will either open up a new reality or repeat the same old story again. My name is Sonia Santani. I'm a mental wellness expert and I'm the CEO of a wellness center in Hong Kong called All About You. And I'm very excited to announce my second book coming along. I'm a part of a book called My Voice, which is a compilation of different female speakers sharing their story with the world. And this is why I'm a part of this book, so I can actually share my story. I shared a lot of my work, my concepts, and this is an opportunity for me to tell you where I came from and why I am doing the work that I do. I talk about my struggles, I talk about my lessons, my experiences, and unlike a lot of experts, my journey didn't happen because of one specific event or an epiphany that came from a tsunami that I was stuck in. It's actually a series of different events that had me slowly grow in consciousness and awareness. And I share about that. And I also talk about the three major lessons that I've learned. So I've learned how the outside doesn't change much, it's the inside. I talk about how I thought losing weight and changing my eyebrows would change life, but no. It's about our belief systems and the power of our subconscious mind. I also talk about learning the lesson that our emotions are going to be there and they're going to constantly be up and down. And just because we're on a healing journey doesn't mean that we're constantly on a high. And finally, I learned that just because I'm on a journey of acceptance doesn't mean other people are too. And judgment is such a natural part of life for us and for others. And it's about constantly accepting what we've judged. And that's why the title of my chapter is called From Judgment to Acceptance. So what I intend to do is give you simple and empowering tools for you to look at your shadows and the dark parts of life and see the gifts in it. So I urge you to buy this book. It's coming out very soon and it's called My Voice. Okay. So the last one, but not the least today, 
uh, for today is Neera Gupta. I'm sure everybody must be thinking, how come everybody's talking and Neera is not talking about her journey. So here I am. So you, you've you been hearing her all this while, but she, uh, she found it a bit odd to introduce herself, of course. So I'm doing it for her today. Neera is not... Neera is a lot of things. She's an entrepreneur, event organizer, TV host, MC, women empowerment ambassador, charity worker. But one thing she's not is a quitter. And everyone who knows her knows that she's up for any challenges the world throws at her and always comes out a winner. And what sets her apart is her ability to push boundaries and see things differently. Over to you, Nira. <laughs> Thank you, Shika. It does sound strange to you know, hear about yourself. <laughs> but thank you so much for those lovely words. Um, and yes, as we mentioned, again, Shika and I have been working on this project about my voice for a very, very long time. And uh, the reason why we did that is because we felt that we all have an opinion, a view, or simply a thought about things that happen to us or around us. Um, but sometimes we think about it, at times we speak about it, maybe take action, but most times we do nothing. But what if we all did something about it? Wouldn't we all be in a better place than where we are today? What if we were able to change the world one person at a time? Wouldn't we be living in a better world? I believe I'm doing that through this book and through my chapter, where I talk specifically about my struggle to become a mother and yet finding my own path to happiness. I admit I might not have been able to do that years ago, but I can today because I am in a better place. But I also wanted to let you all know that even if you're going through similar challenges, you need to know that you're not alone and that there is hope and happiness for each one of us. We just have to look in the right place. Thank you. We have uh, one more person who had to cancel last minute. Um, Shika, do we have her video and we can show it? Helen? Yes, I do have. Okay, so I will now just uh, give a quick introduction to Helen. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she wasn't able to join us last minute. Um, Helen is originally from UK and she now lives in Hong Kong as a certified health coach and founder of Nurture Your Life. She's passionate about educating, empowering, and inspiring people to live healthier, happier lives, one person, one meal, one step, at a time. This is Helen. Hi everyone, I'm Helen Revens, the founder of Nurture Your Life Coaching Practice. I'm also a certified Fearless Living Life Coach. I'm formerly a teacher of food preparation and nutrition for 30 years. So I'm contributing to an amazing book called My Voice and it's a memoir by women of substance. And my story starts in 1999 when I was in Heathrow Airport and I took off my engagement ring as I walked through immigration on my way to start a new life in Hong Kong. What I'm hoping you get from my story is inspiration, that leadership is action, not position, and that you will be inspired to follow your intuition and your inner voice. The other thing that I hope it inspires you to see and feel is that anything is possible. So please buy the book. It's for a really amazing course, um, the Singapore Children's Society. All the money and proceeds goes to charity. So please support this fantastic initiative. Thank you. And that was Helen. Shika, you need to unmute. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this beautiful journey. And it has been a great journey for us even. And we we'll continue to uh, go on and forge ahead. Um, we would also like you to, uh, we would request you to kind of subscribe to our YouTube channel for My Voice Book. I would be sharing the link in the chat box. Uh, kindly do that whenever you get time. It, it, it will really uh, help us to share um, such information to much larger audience. Um, some of you are also the members of our private group on Facebook called My Voice Forum, which was pe previously known as Women Empowerment Forum. In case you are not uh, joined the group, please click on the link. Uh, I would be sharing it again on the uh, chat session. And uh, do share with your friends um, and, and get them to join this forum. Sorry, this is only for women. I would request just women to join the forum. And um, uh, I'm sure you will get to uh, know about our events are you know uh, the blogs that we write uh, we discuss a lot of issues related to women and uh, things that matters to us uh, also uh, with this uh, we are actually come to an end of the today's program and thank you all for joining us i have already shared uh, a link uh, to the book which is already live on amazon kindle we will be soon be available in the physical format on Amazon Global. Let me share the link again for you. Okay, here it is. So do go and grab your copy, at least the digital one. And as everybody has mentioned, this entire sales proceed is going to the Singapore Children's Society. It's so it's it's definitely for a very good cause that we are doing this. So do go ahead and you know make sure uh, you know you buy a copy get inspired, empowered, motivated, and also celebrate the exceptional accomplishments and achievements of all the authors that are part of this book. Um, and uh, I hope uh, someone of you would get inspired and want to uh, make a difference in your life. To the, together, let's embark on a new journey to make life happen on our terms and create a world we deserve to live in. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, it has been um, a very, very humbling uh, and emotional experience for us. So thank you, everybody, for joining. And uh, just like Shika said, do grab a copy of the book. The ebook is already out there. The link has already been shared. And the physical books are going to be out very, very soon. So grab a copy and uh, take a picture, send it to us, post it, and tell all your friends about this wonderful initiative. And thank you to all the authors who joined us today and, of course, shared their journeys. Thank you so much. You all ladies are very, very inspirational. And um, the world is going to love your story. So thank you again, for everybody, for joining. Thank you very much.